Hello everyone! Did you know that you can own a property in the Philippines as a foreigner? Let's go. I'll show you around and I'm gonna explain you how. We are in Bola Bola Spring here in Kambugahay. So here is where the water in Kambugahay Falls come from. And did you know that there is a parcel of land that they are selling in Kambuga High Falls? So there is like 2,400 square meters of parcel of lot that they are selling there. And I'm sure that is very, very overpriced because if you have a very nice um, waterfalls or in front of the beach or anything that is a beautiful scenery in the, in the location, then that makes the lot really, really expensive. So a property that is situated beside main road like this and has a very very nice view Those are expensive properties Now imagine if your lot is situated in a place like this I'm so in love with this property. You have the view of the ocean, you have the view of the mountains. It's along the main road. And the road is actually nice. It looks new. 360 degrees panoramic view. Wow. Wow. If you remember guys, if you watch my first vlog about my moving to Sikihor, I mentioned there that I want Sikihor to be my home base. So these past uh, weeks, I am roaming around the island and looking for properties for sale because I want to buy a small parcel of lot and put up a small house in there to be my home base. I've seen a lot of properties like this, like very, very nice properties with nice view, with a view of the ocean or view of mountains. Some are off grid even and some are just along the, the highway like this. I'm going to give you a tip on how you can uh, easily find property. If you're not in the Philippines, go to Facebook. Facebook is the number one um, social media platform that Filipinos love using. So they put um, all their businesses, their properties, whatever it is that they're selling, they put it on Facebook. Go to Facebook. If you want to buy, for example, a property in Bohol, so type groups in Bohol. So on the search uh, page or on the results page, all these uh, pages that is in Bohol, people from Bohol created like buy and sell in Bohol, buy and sell in Panglao or lots for sale in Bohol. There are groups like that and then you join those groups and start posting there. On your post, just put all your requirements, your budget, the, the size of the property that you're looking for and um, if it's off-grid or you want a property that has a, that is along the, the way like this one, you can put all of that and then once you post it that, a lot of people will put the, in their comments or will send you a private message and then send you pictures of all these properties that they're selling. That is the easiest way. Number two is if you are in the place, let's say in Dumaguete, you went to Dumaguete and then you want to buy a property in Dumaguete, you roam around the the whole town or you roam around the place where you want to buy a lot then you can find lots like this one for example some owners doesn't want to get involved with agents so what they do is they put a post in the, inside their property like for sale and then they leave their phone number there so you can contact those numbers and then you ask them the details like how big or how much so that is the second uh, easiest way to find property in the Philippines. So far in my observation, and I know you, re you already know that, the most expensive properties are the ones that are situated in the developed area, developed town. It's even more expensive it, if it's along the highway, if it's along the main road, or if it's along the highway. That is more expensive if it's along the highway. And it can be more and more <laughs> more really more higher price if it's along the highway and then you have a beautiful view 
a scenic view like this one. If you have beachfront, that is very, very expensive property. Like this one, for example. So this one is in San Juan, one of the most developed towns in Siquijor. San Juan is the most touristy, I would say, because here is where you find all these hotels, resorts, big resorts, um, nice restaurants and nice bars. So like that lot, it's just 149 square meters. You know how much the price is? It's 4 million pesos. The good thing about this property is it's just beside the highway and then it's beachfront. You have a very, very beautiful view of the sunset. So properties like this one is good for businesses. If the scenic view or the view is not really important, then but the access road is important to you, then there are also available properties like that. They are less expensive, of course, than the one that I showed you. And like this one, for example, this property is 4,000 square meters and the price is 1,200 per square meter. You can also find off-grid properties like this one, for example. No, 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 that, not that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, this one. The main road is very far from the actual property. And then the, the access for the electricity and the water is also far. It's actually on the main road as well. It's very far from the property. So it's really off-grid. It's 5,000 square meters. They're selling it for 100 pesos per square meter. And then the lot uh, beside it is 7 hectares. They're also selling that. But it doesn't have a title for the 7 hectares. It's only tax declaration. It's 80 pesos per square meter. But it's a super big lot. So if you compute it, then it's around 5 million pesos. For the properties that has title, can be more expensive as well than the properties that are only tax declaration. Tax declaration, it doesn't have a title. So if you are going to buy a property that only has tax declaration, then you need, the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that the, the person who's selling you the property is the real owner of the property. By the way, guys, if you're interested in properties like this in the Philippines, let me know. Maybe I can help you find it. Just click on the first link on the description box below and fill out the form. Wow, this is so cool. I want this in my house. <laughs> Although I don't have a house. <laughs> Manifesting. Anyway, so guys, do you see me well? I mentioned that you can own a property. Legally, you cannot own a property in the Philippines as a foreigner. But you can acquire a property. There is special process for that. So these are the, the ways that you already know about how you can um, acquire or own a property in the Philippines. The first one is to get married to a Filipino. We all know that already, right? So you are not allowed to put the title on your name. So even if you get married, technically, you still don't own it because the property will be on the name of the Filipino. But you can do it with a different person. What I mean by that is if you know someone that you really trust your whole life with, you can uh, have that person to put the title on their name. You're the one who's going to pay for it. That is secured because the attorney who's going to process it is going to make a memorandum of agreement or like a special power of attorney something. The Filipino who has the, their name on the title, they won't be able to do anything with your property. They cannot touch it. They cannot sell it. They cannot. Um, well, technically, legally, they can sell it because the title is on their name, right? So anything that you own, you can do anything you want. There are consequences if they touch your property so they can't touch your property without um, damages without consequences so if they sold it if they built something in your property then you can file a case against them so that is why it's secured that is what makes it secured that being said you have an option if you don't want to marry a Filipino if you don't want yeah, to go through all of that, then you can do it. If there's a will, there's a way. I spoke to an agent who told me about um, his client is Chinese. They bought a property in a beach lot in Sikihor. They put the name of their Filipino driver in the title of the lot. You just need to make sure that you re really trust that person that you are going to put their name on the title of your property. They will not betray you at the end of the day. 
I mean, what's the difference between you having someone that you really trust and then you buy a property, you put their name on it and you're Filipina that you don't trust anyway? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm sure it's more safe if you put the title in your um, wife's name or your Filipino spouse's name. Of course, that is less risky. Prove beauty or not sure of that. There's another way to acquire a, a property is it is to lease. So I met someone when I was in Dumaguete. I was roaming around Dumaguete and I, I met this uh, foreigner from Spain and he's heading to to Sikihor with his Starlink in his um, scooter. And then he said he got a 500 square meters property in Sikihor. He leased it for 25 years. That is legal. You can uh, you can legally lease a lot here for any purpose, like agricultural purpose, um, residential or business. I've also seen lands for sale in other parts of Visayas, like Bohol, Leyte. But these uh, lands are really, really big, like 10 or 15, you know, 11 hectares, 15 hectares. And uh, what's so nice is inside those properties, they have their own waterfalls. They have their own spring, river or creek, mini waterfall off grid. And it's far from the main road. That is what makes it cheap. They're selling it for like 40 to 50 pesos per square meter. The cheapest I saw was in uh, Bohol. It has a mini waterfall inside it. It's like 11 hectares and it's like 30 pesos per square meter. But oh my gosh, if you want an off-grid life, you have your own waterfall inside your property. How cool! Very cheap but because the land is very big. If you calculate it, then it's not cheap altogether as well. <laughs>